Hi everyone, so first of all, a huge thank you for the comments, they're really inspiring and I realise they, they kind of, they really do make me want to do more videos, so I've decided to do something different now. Um, I kind of need you guys' as motivation, so um, I, if you guys give me three likes and three comments on this video, I will do another video. So uh, it's not asking for a lot, in fact I've set the bar super low because I do like doing the videos. Um, and they've got to be from three separate people as well. <laughs> uh, but if I do get those three likes, three comments, I will I will release another tutorial on AR Core, AR Kit, and AR Foundation, which is what all of this is. Um, there works on all f on the device, AR Kit and AR Core. And and actually, what I want to do in this video is I want to show you something really interesting. And I think it's really useful. It's actually how to do augmented reality to the best of our ability really in a really simple way in the editor so that means we've got a fake floor and we can place items down on it in the same way we would and obviously I'm going to build off of this is just the basic stuff like ray casting to the floor um, and putting like a cube on it like we did in the previous one and except, except it's not going to be on the phone it's going to be on the uh, on the editor and you're going to, I'm going to show you how it works on the editor as well as on the phone the same code so uh, let's get started so we're going to make things a little bit easier for ourselves we've got this code here that runs uh, only on device and we want something that runs in the editor um, so let's do something where we check if it's in the editor and if it's in the editor we'll run uh, our kind of test code and then when it's not on the editor we'll run this code pretty simple in, in principle anyway so let's go if application dot is editor then we're going to run our editor code else we're going to run this code so we've done this code already so now all we need is our editor code so our editor, editor code we're going to do we're going to do another array and we're going to do camera dot main again uh, and we're going to do screen point to array and this is going to take a new vector three, and the vector three is going to have three points, and those three points are going to be the camera dot main dot pixel width times 0.5f, and then the other point is going to be camera dot main dot pixel height. So we're basically looking to look at the middle of the screen and then a 0f um, and that way we have a ray cast from the center of the screen uh, Android the, the AR core stuff comes with a pretty nice ray cast here um, which is really useful but we're creating our own ray which is why we have to use the pixel width and pixel height now it's time to create the actual ray cast. Um, so let's actually have something that's gonna collect the ray cast. So the ray cast hits, and then let's create the ray cast cast, and then we want the ray. We want it to be the out of it. So when it hits something, we want to be able to use it, use that that surface that's going to be stored and hit. Um, and then we want the distance of the ray cast. So this is the 500. It's huge, but it doesn't matter. And then the last one is actually the key is a layer mask. Um, now we don't have that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to create a layer mask, public layer mask layer mask and then I'm going to put that here like that okay and then I think what I can do is I can do if this should return a bool so if we hit something then we want to do um, debug dot log, and let's do hit the floor. 
All right. So, um, before I was thinking, before I thought because, um, what we're going to do is go to test floor. Have I done this yet? And then create, have the AR test plane as the floor um, in the AR layer one. We want to make sure we've got this AR test plane. So you can add that in if you haven't done that already. And now if I go to floor and we've got AR test plane as the floor, um, we want to also go to our auto place item code, which is this code we just wrote, and we want to make sure that our layer mask is on AR test plane now. So what should happen is now we're testing the game out, is we should have, so no, um, no debug statements yet, but when I point at the floor, there we go, we hit the floor, uh, which is great, which is really good. So now what we want to do is also actually run this code, right? The same code here. That means that we, whether we're debugging in the editor or we're on the phone, we can run the same code, except it's not going to be hit pose or position. I think it's going to be hit dot point. Let's try dot point. There we go. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to put the set to active, uh, same code, right? Now we want to make a few amendments here, but we'll, we'll let's just check that this works. What we should see, uh, in case you're wondering if you haven't figured it out yet, is the ground, there we go, the, the cube should appear exactly in the middle of the screen where we're looking on the floor, the fake floor. So we're testing in the device now. Right, our code, right? We test. That's what we really want to be testing. Our code, the AR core stuff, we know works, so we don't really need to test that. So we've got a few things uh, that we need to change now, right? Um, the first thing we need to do is we don't want to have to have duplicate code, right? We, this is not this part here and this part having the exact same code is we're looking. It's going to create a huge mess, right? Because what's going to happen is we're going to create our code maybe in the game and then we're going to have to copy and paste it here and every time we make a change we're going to have to keep copying and pasting. We don't want to do that. So let's actually create another um, function here and we're going to call this game code. Right, And game code is going to run this code here. The difference is it's going to take a vector 3 called hit point right and hit point is going to run exactly the same thing as this except it's going to um, it's going to use this hit point code right so instead of running the code this code for different for each different one, we're just going to call this function now using the, the different. So let's delete this. We don't need this no more. Sorry, my phone's uh, going off a little bit, a bit popular today. Uh, we're going to get rid of this code and we're going to get rid of this and we're going to do take that and put that here. And then again, I'm going to get rid of this. Right, so the only all we're doing now, we've got the exact same code, uh, and every time we get the hit point position, we can just edit this one piece of code now. So this is our this is our game code now, right here, um, and this is the only difference between whether we're in the editor or whether we're on the device. For now, since we're doing a very simple um, style app that just needs to you know to know where the point is, really, that's kind of it. Um, and now this will work whether we're in the editor or on device. 
So the only other thing is we have this test floor, right? Um, and this test floor is on all the time. We don't actually want that. We want to switch this off. Um, so what we'll also do is we'll add some code here in our, a a in our auto placement code and we'll do um, public game object um, and I think the best way of doing this would actually be um, an array so let's do testing ground call it that um, and what we'll do is we'll say in the awake function which is here we'll do another piece of code that says if application dot is editor we want to loop through the testing ground code testing ground objects so right now we've only got one floor but we might have loads of different floors we, want, we might want to create like a fake floor that's really low down and another one that's really high up depending on what we're trying to build uh, so let's just give ourselves that option so testing ground i dot set active uh, this is if we're in the editor, so we want to be testing, so let's set this to true. And if we're not in the editor, so if we're in the device, we want to hide this test ground. Because otherwise, it's going to ruin the experience of people who have the device and are actually looking for a real floor. We'll have this, we'll have this random cube here, and we, nobody wants that. So what we can do is that we can leave this test floor on for now. Every time we're in the editor, we can test our game out. Um, we can uh, edit this our game code, our main our main game code. Obviously, it looks tiny right now because what we're doing is 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 checking where the if the cube hits the ground um, and then kind of putting it on the ground. But we can we're going to edit this up a lot more, and it's going to be so much quicker and easier because we don't have to keep building the device, right? So um, let's just play this, and since we're on the in the editor, everything should work fine. Uh, let's select the camera. Let's just look at the floor, and you can see the cube appears just perfect. I can look left and right, and the cube moves as well along perfectly. And also, if I was to just accidentally switch the test floor off. Um, and I hit play and then realize, oh, hang on, I wanted test floor and I don't need to worry about that because it should turn the test floor back on. Did it turn it on? I don't think it did. Why didn't it turn it on? Well, I can tell you why I didn't turn it on. This is why we, we still have to test stuff is because I didn't put the test ground in there. Right, so we've got to make sure we do that as well. But that's why we're testing stuff. Uh, let's put that in there now. <laughs> Okay, now it should turn it on. It should put the test floor on because we're testing on the device. Great. And what I can do is I can also, if I'm building it here, I don't, I don't want to keep having to put the test floor on and off. So I can just leave it on. I can leave it on completely now and build my game in the editor. And what I'm going to do now, just to prove a point, is I'm going to build this to my phone and my phone should um, hide the test floor and all the rest of the code should work as normal and we basically created a way for us to test um, AR core, AR, uh, AR, AR um, the uh, Apple one which is for some reason slipped my mind what it's called now which is really random uh, AR kit, um, AR core and AR kit, and we can test either one of those on our devices, whatever devices they are. So let's have a look and see if that works when I build and run. So the whole point of this is that you don't have to actually build constantly onto your phone, but I wanted to do it this one time so you could see that it worked in the editor and the exact same code is running on the phone as well. I mean, it's always good to test on the phone, but we don't want to have to test every small thing. So look, we can see it works. Everything's working as normal as, as we expect. So that means we can just focus on our game code going forward. And it's going to save us so much time uh, as we build, uh, as we go to the next 
uh, our next code. So we can see that the um, the cube is um, <clears throat> it's a bit it, it's, it's it's not very smooth. We noticed that before, which is also why it's good to still test on the device. Um, and we can fix that though. We can fix all this, um, and we can use the new code that we've done to fix it on the computer a lot faster than we could have on having the constant test it. So okay, I'll fix that in the next in the next tutorial. But again, I will only release that tutorial if I get three likes and three comments. Super low. If you're watching this now, just hit like and just leave a comment. Let me. In fact, it would be lovely to. I'd love to know if this helped you, uh, and I'd love to know if any of my previous tutorials have helped you as well. So um, that would be lovely to hear. Um, and I will see you in the next tutorial.